Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. Well, what have I been up to and what did I learn this week? I decided this week I would try felting. I've watched a lot of different tutorials, been tempted and then thought, nah, don't know if I could do that. But this week I decided to step outside my comfort zone and give it a go. So of course, I'm going to felt a tea cozy. Now in this book, Tea Cozy 4, which I bought, there was this felted tea cozy made in the traditional style you would make a sewn tea cozy which covers the entire pot. Now I didn't make this diamond pattern but I did make this shape and I used something a little different. So I decided I'm going to use some of my gifted yarn up and use it for different projects I think it's suitable for. So last year from a subscriber who will remain anonymous, I received quite a bit of this pink and grey yarn. It's a five ply pure wool crepe and it's made in Australia. It's quite coarse. So every time I looked at it, I kept thinking I can't make an undergarment with it. You would be required to wear quite a thick undershirt. So this is the label, Click Heat and Pure Wool. They were 25 gram wools. And there was quite a bit. It doesn't have colour numbers made in Australia. Okay, quite a bit of this. So that's why I decided being pure wool, I wasn't sure if the crepe would, I would give it a go felting. So I knitted up my tea cosy and I felted it. And here is the finished product. Ta -da! It's not perfect by any means. What did I learn? Well, this ridging border didn't felt the same as the inside. It's felted, but it's caused the inside to buckle. Now the pattern says make the tea cozy quite big. So the tea cozy I made, if I hadn't felted it, would have fitted an eight, six to eight cup teapot, one of the biggest teapots. But when I felted it, it felted down to this size, which was smaller than I anticipated. This is a two cup teapot. Look, it's not perfect. It could pull down more and get a better shape like that and pretend it is, but it should be more like that. And that's because, yes, felting is trial and error. And you can see that it's, it's buckled. It's felted everywhere, but just not perfectly. I held two strands of the yarn together to give myself like an eight ply. And yeah, I sort of faded, knitted it and tried to balance it to try and make it look uniform. But a fairly easy stocking stitch pattern. So that was what I learned this week. Felting is not as easy as it looks and it depends on the project as to what it's going to look like. Now, Reeves has given me a plan or a project for another felted item. It's quite a large item to make, requires a lot of wool. And if I do it and when I do it, I'll share it with you. It should turn out because it's a flat item. But anyway, that was my attempt at having a go at felting. I reckon give it a go if you want to try it. It's trial and error and you will enjoy doing it because I couldn't wait for it to finish to see what it was going, what size it was going to be. And I was astounded at how small it turned out. So using gifted yarn, a lot of the gifted yarn I like to keep and make things for myself, but I do have some that were sent to me for different projects so I could sell it on my charity store. So first of all, the poncho I made for the bot along with Daniel the poor fly guy and Jill the fiber floozy it was the Queen's poncho by Bag O Day it was very popular and when I was selling it I had a couple of ladies say are you going to make any more one lady said are you going to make one in purple well I went through my stash and I had been sent some Karen cakes by Janice my subscriber in Victoria hi Janice They've had the longer, world's longest lockdown ever, which brings me to another idea. So it's Karen Cakes in um, Bumbleberry, I think it was called. Everyone knows what a Karen Cake is, 80% acrylic, 20% wool, which is what I used for the other one. 
and I put on a blingy button. So I have made another one for the November stall because I managed to get another blingy button. And I made it slightly smaller because I didn't use the entire cake. I did colour control it a bit, forgot to bring it in. I wanted it to finish with a dark edging so there was a bit of the lavender left over because that's when I colour controlled it. But that is my second Queen's Poncho by Bag O Day. I'll leave a link in the description below to the tutorial. This is on my playlist of favourite tutorials. Check that out. I have, if I've ever mentioned tutorials and you've forgotten, check out my favourite pa um, playlist of favourite tutorials because that's where it'll be. This will be there and in the link in the description below. This will sell at the November market, no problem. Now, I've been making lovies and I said, I thought I had finished. I only have the little penguin to go. I've done the teddy bear. But every time I move something, I find another toy. And that's when I remembered when Christmas decorations started to go out this week in Cairns, that in January at the Christmas sales, I bought a heap of toys ready for, to do lovies for Christmas. And yes, I hadn't finished because I found Teddy. He's got little red legs and a little red hat. So I made him a lovey. This was gifted yarn quite some time ago by my friend Janet Lepre. It is beautiful yarn. It is Premier Worsted Weight Anti-Pilling. Premier Anti-Pilling is my favourite yarn. I haven't been able to pass it yet. But yes, that is what that is. A little lovey for him. Now I use quite a small hook. And I was playing yarn chicken towards the end and thought it might not be long enough, but I just made it. So it was um, Go Team that she sent me. A, she sent me a box of different Christmas yarns, and that is the last one left. And there he is. Isn't he cute? So that was gifted yarn. So um, I had some questions asked me about how do I work out my net profit for my market store so here goes I don't do it like a lot of people so for example I work on the cost of goods the time my time is my hobby that does not get costed into the cost of goods so for example the Karen cake was sent to me and the only thing I paid for was the six dollars for the button so the cost of that will be six dollars I will then put a retail price on it and deduct when I sell it deduct the cost of six dollars and that will be my net profit that will go to charity so that's what I do same here it'll be the cost of the bear because I remember what I paid for him but not the cost of the um, lovey so say for example I had done the bear and paid for the yarn I would work out the number of grams used and weigh the ball, let's say it's a hundred, let's say it's six dollars a hundred grams, and I use 20 grams, so it's 20 grams of that six dollars and the lovey, and that would be my cost. Then I would put retail and deduct it. My crafting time is my hobby, and I do not cost that into my goods, even in my Etsy shop. It's usually the cost of the yarn any additional extra, extras like blingy buttons and um, that's about it. Some people do cost in their time. For example, I was looking on Etsy at a tea cosy that popped up that a lady had made. Now I worked out, because it was quite decorative, if I had made that I would probably cost that at um, say $15.00 and then add something for retail to get a profit. She was actually selling that for $45, which to me says she costed some of her time in it. I have seen tea cozies that I would sell for retail at $20 going for $75. If people wanna pay that, that's great. But for me, I'm happy with the net profit I make because it's all about, um, the net profit go, for me goes to a charity. So like this tea cozy, I will sell it cheap and believe me, someone will buy it. 
it doesn't matter that it's not perfect but it cost me nothing other than my time because the yarn was gifted to me so that's how I cost out my goods for the markets I am working on stuff for the November market I'll show you that in a future video thank you to everyone for the lovely feedback comments on what I could make one of the things that hit true was I don't make a lot of baby items or sell a lot of baby items and I actually had a lady at the markets ask me about baby items so I've sort of been thinking of that and working on a few of the suggestions so thank you so much I really appreciate it because it can get a bit stale with just tea cozies and loveys and blankets I found some great little baby items that I'm Think I'll have some fun making for the November market so to my friend Janice thank you for the lovely yarn to Janet thank you for the lovely yarn and to my anonymous subscriber thank you for the yarn the profits from these will go to a good cause to Janice I had a great idea today about a trip to Victoria next year maybe in April something to do with Reeves if our borders are open and we can fly down there I am hoping it comes off because it will make Reeves's year if we go and I said to him it's he doesn't like to fly alone so I fly with him and the beauty of coming to Victoria is Bendigo woolen mills Great Ocean Road woolen mills and catching up with all the yarny people in Victoria if I can so let's see how our borders go he did say to me it'll be an expensive trip <laughs> who cares if we have fun and it makes his year, why not? So until next time, guys, remember, life's an adventure. Plan an adventure like I am and make sure you have one crafty day. Bye for now.